Resident Evil 6 is probably one of the most talked about video games for being a huge letdown. We've seen the reviews, we've read the articles, and now we've played the game to find out if Resident Evil 6 really is, for lack of a better word, well, let's see if it sucks. Well, it doesn't. In my honest opinion, I actually really enjoyed this game. I enjoyed it a lot. I know this game got a lot of hate and probably still does. Let's talk about what you get in the game and you guys can decide if the game's worth playing. Warning, spoilers ahead but not too much, not enough to take away the experience of the game. So we're playing this on the Nintendo Switch, so the ways to unlock certain game modes or bonus features are going to be different. By different I mean a lot of it is already unlocked on the spot, that's right. You start the game with four campaigns, all of them already unlocked, and you can decide which campaign you want to go through first. And you can play as any of the two characters per campaign. So you got Leon and Helena, Chris and Pierce, Jake and Sherry, and Ada Wong. Like I said, you can play them in any order you like since a lot of their stories are going to take place at the same time. So while Chris and Pierce are in China looking for Ada Wong, you got Jake and Sherry trying to escape a lab in China since they got kidnapped like six months before. That and Leon's also somewhere in the streets of China trying to escape a bunch of zombies. I say play the game in the order starting from the top. The main story will make sense eventually. Now Ada's campaign in the previous versions of this game, that one you have to actually unlock it by completing all of the first three campaigns. But in this version it's already unlocked. Ada gets a solo campaign. Unlike the other three you have to have a partner. The good part is they're just there mainly for the story. Yes they can shoot, revive you when you're dying, but they're not gonna hog the spotlight like not follow orders and just go head first and die. They also don't headshot all the enemies where you're just there left wondering you're, why you're even part of the game. Yes, I'm talking about you, Shiba. Let's talk about controls. Okay, I know where this is going. I know a lot of people complain about how the game actually tries to take the control away from you by doing a lot of quick time events where you have to pound a certain button to do something or wiggle the damn stick to avoid enemy attacks or even to open a damn door. This, I am not a fan of. Some people may like it, some don't. I think it's a shitty feature and it ruins the gameplay for me. Lucky for us, it can turn this off. Yes, you can just let the cutscene happen without pounding the damn button on the controller. Got through the whole game without even going through any quick time events. Compared to the previous Resident Evil games, this game has a lot of new mechanics, and I mean a lot of new mechanics, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. From dashing and doing melee attacks without having to equip a knife, to grabbing a zombie's head and bashing it into the wall. Also, different characters will have different animations with these controls as well. You can now move while aiming and dodge enemy attacks. Admit it, we wanted that, we wanted that! It kinda takes the horror out of the gameplay by doing this. Actually, it takes the horror out of the game entirely, since buggy and limited controls really did make the whole previous horror and survival game scary. You also have a skill system which lets you equip three skills at the same time to improve your gameplay. Unlike before when you can level up your weapons to do more damage, now you can equip skills. Whether you want more item drops, deal more damage, have steady aiming or recoil when shooting, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I actually like this a lot better than upgrading the whole weapons thing. Let's talk about Leon's campaign. Leon and Helena. So this campaign is what most people would say is the best out of the four campaigns since this really brings back the feels from previous Resi games. The slow walking zombies, escaping from a zombie mob on the streets, defending a gun shop from a zombie attack. This campaign has the best areas to cover in my opinion. From the subway area to the streets of China, you even get a little scene where Leon's in a military truck just driving through the zombie infested streets. I get it, it wasn't scary enough, but that was a nice little touch. You do get some parts of the game where they just walk really slow and you're forced to go through it where no action happens and you just have to get to the next part of the area. I wasn't really a fan of that as well. I liked everything in this campaign. From Leon's dual handguns to the zombie dinosaur. Okay, not so sure how I feel about the zombie dinosaur boss fight in the game, but it was still a lot of fun to blast the crap out of that mother- Chris and Pierce campaign. I played as Pierce on my first clear since Pierce has a badass sniper rifle which is only available if you play as Pierce and boy did I not regret playing that one. Um, and I'm not just talking about the sniper rifle. 
Minor spoilers? Yeah, just play the game and you'll find out. Chris's campaign is more of an action game than a horror game. If there was any horror to begin with, it's basically zero on this one. It gives a more Call of Duty feel to it. Uh, you got military guys with you on your missions, and you go up against zombies with sniper rifles. I mean seriously, they're not just guns, they got sniper rifles. But that doesn't mean you don't go up against awesome enemies as well. You even got a giant zombie snake and a whole lot of other stuff. Now just because it's not a horror game does not mean it was not fun to play. I also had a lot of fun playing this game. Chris's story mostly goes about Chris tracking down Ada Wong because Chris now wants Ada dead since, uh, spoilers, it's not really Ada. Like I said, a lot of these stories happen at the same time, so you get to a point where Chris and Pierce meets Jake and Sherry, Chris finds out Jake is actually the son of Albert Wesker, and of course Chris meets Leon while tracking down Ada Wong in China. Chris and Pierce's campaign probably has the most dramatic feel to it, even up to the end, no spoilers. It also has a lot of action, probably the most action in the game you're gonna get, but no boulder punching action in this one. Am I disappointed? Not really. It's been three years since I killed Wesker. I can't let this war follow me forever. Jake and Sherry, now there's a new addition to the Resident Evil roster. Sherry Birkin is a little girl Leon and Claire saved on Resident Evil 2, who is now part of the Hunting and Killing Zombies organization. And then we have Jake, Wesker's kid, whose blood holds the cure for the C-Virus. I played as Sherry on my first clear, and then I played as Jake. Jake is a ninja man. Instead of having knives for a secondary weapon, this guy uses his fists. Yes, you can equip his fists as weapons to whoop some zombie ass. This campaign probably has the most to offer in the Resident Evil franchise, since it does still focus on the cure for the C-Virus. The foes in this campaign is really a combination of everything, and even got a new terror called Ustanak, a beefed up steroid abusing version of Nemesis. Like the Chris and Pierce campaign, the locations of the main campaign are in Edonia in China. Still a really good campaign with a final boss, minor spoilers, you can play as Jake and go toe to toe with Ustanak in a fist fight. Because why not? The story goes by Sherry trying to convince Jake to help find the cure for the C-Virus. Jake is immune to the virus and wants 50 million dollars for his blood. Obviously his character will soften up eventually since he is a good guy. Thank you Sherry. Jake! <clears throat> The last campaign which is already unlocked on the Nintendo Switch version is Ada Wong. I was excited to play as Ada in this game because Ada is just badass. Doesn't matter what kind of crap she goes up against, she'll still have a sarcastic remark to everything while looking so friggin hot. Also this is where the story gets to what's really going on and why it's confusing. Yes I know a lot of people actually find it confusing, but without saying too much, we got Ada versus Carla. I mean Ada. Ada's campaign has a lot of stealth to it, and a lot of one-hitting zombies while trying your best not to get caught. Not exactly what the Resi franchise is known for, but I'm not complaining, her campaign fits her perfectly. Ada's got this crossbow which can pin zombies to the wall or on the ground so you can finish them off with a melee move to keep it, you know, stealthy. The foes in this campaign, still a combination of everything, and the best part of Ada's campaign is she's actually behind the scenes helping out Leon, Chris, and Sherry without them even knowing it. Or they probably do, but whatever. You even get to an area where Ada's crawling through the vents trying not to get caught while Chris and Pierce are raging hell on the zombies. Still a really good campaign and a campaign you want to save for last. Seriously, this is where the story starts to make sense. Hate to break it to you, but you're nothing but a cheap knockoff at best. Rest in peace, Carla. Resident Evil 6 also has an amazing mercenaries mode. Aside from all the other bonus features, which are all already unlocked by the way on the Nintendo Switch version, you can play as any of the 7 or 8 characters in mercenaries mode and a secret character you can still unlock. The costumes in this game are also easy to unlock. Display Mercenaries No Mercy and score a B or higher on any character to unlock their costumes. 
B rank gets one costume, A rank gets you two, and S gets you all three. If you finish the game, you'll also get to unlock the infinite ammo option. Now you'll have to finish all four campaigns to get this option, which you can then purchase with skill points and equip them. That way you can go all out on your next playthrough if you ever want to play as another character and go through the whole story again. I love the characters in this game, the old and new ones. It was nice to see Leon and Chris with Ada. I loved the new monsters in the different areas of the game. I enjoyed playing with the new mechanics. Was it just me or was this game really not a bad game? Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If you're still thinking it over whether you want to play the game despite the not so good reviews, here's a clip of Sherry in a sailor costume to help you think. Check what the fuck are you doing?